Um, I, was, I was just wondering, uh, I think the, the, I mean, we've had the basket trick and so on, but uh, the one that excited a lot of comedy, um, and uh, since I've lived across two centuries, I remember in the 70s and 80s, it was always the Indian rope trick, you know, there's yeah. kind of a jingoism about it. But um, you, you've dealt quite an extensively with the rope trick, and why was it such okay. a fascinating thing and a secret never revealed? Okay, yeah. Um, look, um, as I said, there are references to the rope trick that go back a very long way. Um, uh, but um, it, it suddenly, I guess, captured the popular imagination in 1890 when the Chicago Tribune uh, published an article um, by, by um, uh, um, it, it described how two uh, Americans went to India and witnessed a, uh, you know, came across a troop of, of, of street magicians. They did all the normal um, tricks of you know uh, the basket trick, the mango trick, and you know various other bits of sleight of hand. But then they executed the uh, the rope trick. So um, a magician threw a, ro a rope up into the air, where it stayed upright mysteriously. You know the end disappearing into the sky. Um, the magician's assistant climbed up the rope, also disappeared, and then the limbs come raining down, <laughs> which the magician miraculously reassembles and you know the rope comes down and all that sort of stuff so the the, the name of the um, um, uh, of, of the person who witnessed this was Fred s Elmore which um, uh, well, I'll to explain the significance of that in a minute but anyway the story uh, this news but, but, but so, so but, but what happened was um, they had smuggled a camera Along, so they were able to take a photograph of this performance, and the and and Elmore's um, um, companion uh, made a sketch. When they developed the film, they saw that there was nothing there. So this feat had been achieved by hypnotism. They had been hypnotized into believing that this rope had, you know, disappeared into the air and all this sort of stuff. Um, the 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 story was a hoax. Fred S. Elmore was uh, a pun on, on sell more newspapers, okay? Um, but but uh, nobody got the joke. The story went viral, as, as it would in, you know, in, in the late 19th century <laughs> meaning of the term. But it was picked up all around the world, literally. Um, and, uh, and then the newspaper published a retraction about four months later saying, you know, actually this is just a joke, it was just a ploy to sell more newspapers. Um, <laughs> but by then it had taken on a, a life of its own. Mm. So suddenly you had people coming out of the woodworks um, saying, no, 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 uh, that's not true. This, I, I have seen this trick being performed in you know, dusty village squares and so on um, with my own eyes, or I've heard of somebody who's seen it and all this sort of stuff. Um, and then it, it just grew into this... Um, so, so really by the end of the um, uh, 19th, early 20th century, it, it became you know, the most talked about, but also the most controversial uh, of, of all tricks because for uh, a rope, you know, for it to be executed um, as per the legend of a rope being thrown into the air and without, you know, in the middle of, of a dusty square or a field, um, and, you know, it is impossible for the rope to, to stay up straight, for somebody to climb up, to disappear, for the limbs to rain down and all this sort of stuff. And this is all open air. Yeah, this is all open is. air. I mean, you know, doing it on stage like these guys did is another matter altogether. Sure. But for an Indian magician to do it out in the open air, uh, it can only mean two things. One, that it is really just a legend and it's a hoax and all, all that. Or it is proof that India is the land of real magic. <laughs> You know, magic that actually defies the, the laws of nature.